ordinarily do, like Will Smith did. I bet he wishes he could take it back, but he can't. You can't unbreak a stick. The unbreak the stick defense. Now, the jury didn't buy it and brought back a guilty verdict on the first degree murder charges in about two hours. But you can expect to hear a lot more of this in courtrooms around the country. This is part of why you heard me say on Monday night show that I thought Will Smith should be arrested. The idea that he could just attack someone coming from a distance like that, not a case of two guys squared up in front of each other with one guy insulting the other's wife, was clearly grounds for arrest. Now, didn't happen. Lawyers everywhere, though, now have something to point to when arguing their clients just snapped. Joining me now, Brian Buckmeyer and Jesse Weber, both are hosts and legal analysts for the Law and Crime Network, which I founded. Great to see you uh, both. Jesse, you are in, here in studio with me, so let me start with you. Do you think we're going to see this used by defense lawyers? I mean, not necessarily in murder. I, I can't believe it's actually happened in a murder case, but... In cases around the country? I do, particularly with domestic violence cases, right? Because what you're going to see, it normalize that behavior, particularly, and I think everybody was set with the wrong impression here, that if a victim doesn't press charges or a victim doesn't report or a victim doesn't cooperate with police, that means, oh, perpetrators let off the hook because Chris Rock didn't press charges. You know how much I have a problem with that? They didn't need him to move forward with this investigation. They should have arrested him. And this is what we're going to see. Not only the, I, oh, I snapped defense, but oh, if the victim doesn't uh, somehow cooperate with investi the investigation, police, their hands are tied. That's not the case. That's not how the law works. Look, look, look. Brian Buckmeyer is a very principled criminal defense lawyer. So he wouldn't do the sorts of things that we're talking about here in terms of trying to get a prosecutor to say, well, what about what happened with Will Smith? I, Brian, I'm more concerned about the conversations that happen behind closed doors uh, between defense attorneys and prosecutors saying, you know, Oh, you're going after my client for something that's not nearly as bad as what Will Smith did. Well, that, that's always going to be an argument that defense attorneys use because that is within the, the realm of possible arguments. Uh, I, I agree with Jesse. The Will Smith defense applied here is bizarre. But what I do think can happen and probably will happen to your point, Dan, is this defense is going to be substituted for what defense attorneys have been using since I was in law school. It's the typical law school argument of the heat of passion. And the, typically the analogy given is a man walks into a bedroom and sees his wife cheating on him. And so in the heat of passion, he acts. But when you look at this William Ray case, that is far from that shock and awe of walking into a situation like your wife cheating on you, you assaulting someone, or, or maybe even worse. So the application of it here, especially knowing the context with Will Smith and Chris Rock here, are ridiculous to compare. But I can see in some cases this being the now Will Smith defense. Yeah. Um, and, and Jesse, we were talking a moment ago about the possibility of the discussions behind closed doors. Um, look, I actually disagree with you a little on the whether they should have moved forward without the complaining witness, meaning any other case in California, misdemeanor battery, you don't have the complaining witness, very hard to move forward if it's not a domestic violence case. But um, I do think the precedent issue that, that it sets here is such a problem um, we often say that the law sets a standard, right? And, and that I'm worried about. And I'm worried that it's not just going to be the Will Smith defense. It's going to be the Will Smith don't prosecute me argument. Yeah, and it's, is it the celebrity defense now? Because if he was in a position that if he did that, obviously nothing happened to him. But what happened if somebody in the third row did it? What right. happens if another celebrity did it? I mean, would they have been arrested? And I think people are going to look at this and say, well, if he can go on national television yeah. in front of the entire world and slap another comedian who was defenseless, what can I do now? And, and I'm sorry, Dan, I have to just disagree yeah. really quickly with that, is the idea is you want probable cause to investigate. We all saw it. Yeah. You know, with the complaining witness, sometimes they're the only person that saw that violence. They might have a mark on their skin. They might have a conflicting report. We all watched that in real time. So I think the LAPD had a duty to go move forward there. Um, hey, Br Brian, I want to ask you about this new statement from the Academy. I know you're not an, an, ex an expert on none of us are on sort of academy procedure um, in, in Los Angeles. But I have to tell you, I'm surprised that they're already coming out 
with this kind of harsh statement, it says to me that they've gotten a lot of blowback uh, against the reaction that we initially saw. The fact that they're claiming now that they asked him to leave and he refused, that's a big statement against Will Smith. I mean, they, they have to, because right now the question is, who's, who's, who's responsible? Um, we, as Jesse pointed out, we all saw this. Someone should have acted, whether it be the LAPD or uh, the Academy. And so now they're saying, hey, we did something. We asked him to leave. My question, though, to the follow would be, well, how did you ask him to leave? Was it a, a polite tap on the shoulder and say, yeah. hey, excuse yeah. me, Mr. Smith, can, can, you, can you leave, please? Or where there's a bunch of security uh, coming up to him and saying, it's time to go. I, I think the right. manner in which is a big question. I'm going to guess it's the former and not the latter, because I saw the standing ovation when he got the award, which I, I think in many levels is, is somewhat disgusting to see that everyone in this audience saw this assault and then applauded the person 20 minutes later. Yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet that Brian's right, that this was more of a, Mr. Smith, would you like to leave? And if so, we have some security that can help you if you so desire right. uh, to walk out. But he was the most powerful celebrity that he was in the front row. Everybody yeah. knew he was the front runner to win. Tell you what, before the slap, I wanted him to win. Yeah, yeah. And they were in a, a crisis situation there. All right, so Brian Buckmeyer, you got to commit to me that you will never, as a criminal defense lawyer, use the Will Smith defense. <laughs> you ready to go on the record and say it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we shall see. This is the problem. Brian Buckmeyer, Jesse Weber, thank you both. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.